Ron Hamlin is with us from Virtual Reload. How are you doing today? I'm great. How are you, Toby? Yeah, I'm doing great as well. Now, can you tell me a little bit about what Virtual Reload actually is, first of all? Yeah, so we coach esports, hmm. which is a matter of helping students to gain skills in video games in order to help them to get college scholarships or professional team recruitment. Hmm. And what kind of scholarships can they get then from doing sports kind of electronically? Yeah. So in America here, we have around 200 colleges that are offering scholarships for gaming. This is very much like a football, soccer, baseball scholarship. Yeah. But instead of playing one of those physical sports, they're playing games like Fortnite, Overwatch, Super Ooh. Smash Brothers, and that sort of thing. Yeah. Is it hard to get older people to take this seriously? Because I hear even people these days try and belittle courses that are actually reasonable things to study, like film. Adults are always like, Whew, it's not a proper subject. So <laughs> trying to convince them that esports is legitimate, is that quite hard? It can be, but I always like to spin it this way. One thing is if your child is a gamer... Yeah. They're going to find ways to play video games in a, in college if they choose to go to college. Mm. Um, and if they're not in some sort of a structured team, then that video gaming can be. I say that cautiously because yeah. I don't think all video gaming is bad. I don't think um, I do think you can do it in excess. So if, if yeah. they if they're at that point of well, I've got to you know find time to play and I'm not going to study that sort of thing, it can be detrimental to their school time if they are in that mm. scenario. Yeah. But if they were on the team now and they were on a scholarship ride, if you will, now they have to keep their grades at that at that GPA that allows them to keep the scholarship and stay on the team. Mm. There's a there's a driving force. And then the other thing is that we're going to reach kids through games that wouldn't otherwise be reached. Right. So mm. we're not looking for the soccer player to all of a sudden become a gamer. Yeah. Right. Mm. We're we're reaching students that don't have an outlet right now. Yeah. The stat is that 80% of kids who who join an esports program in high school have not done any other extracurricular activity. Wow. Yeah. And I guess if you're going to be studying something and focusing on it, it's got to be something that you enjoy. So gaming will be that for a lot of people. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And it's a bit of a summer camp you do as well, right? We've got one coming up in a couple of weeks. Um, yeah, we're it's our first time actually running. I, I guess technically we have we we're part of a summer camp last year, but this is the first time it's our, our whole program running through. And it's going to be a process of teaching them how to run a, an event, yeah. uh, how to run the tournament organization side of it, the graphics, the production, the stream. And we're doing a game the first week is going to be Rocket League. Mm. So they'll be learning Rocket League with a coach. And then the Friday of the week, they're going to then produce and run their own event Ooh. to showcase to different college recruiters. Yeah. And how does it actually work? Are the students going there or is it going to be done more virtually? We're offering us a, a multi-platform. So, yeah, they can be physically in the building or they can be online, virtual, remote. Yeah. I guess because of COVID, a lot of people might prefer to be remote. Yeah. And I guess a lot of children and young people, whatever age they might be, would kind of usually be a little bit apprehensive about going on a summer camp. But because they have the option to still do it from home, it kind of maybe makes it open to a lot more people that would have otherwise been a bit scared of staying ages. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of reason, even even without something like COVID in the picture, offering the yeah. virtual environment. Um, it's, it's very helpful because one thing is yeah. that if you're really into games and you're not really fitting in with, with your peers at yeah. school because of that, it gives you a little bit more of um, I don't know, anonymity protection um, against having to be face to face with others. Mm. Yeah. You know, can get them out of their shell kind of thing. Yeah. And what gave you the idea to do this then, first of all? So I've been gaming since I was a kid, mm. original uh, Super Mario Bros. on the Nintendo. And uh, an entrepreneur at heart, and I love kids. So it kind of all came together when I learned about esports. I hadn't heard of esports. Like I'm not a personally, I'm not a competitive gamer. Mm. So I hadn't really been in that scene. And then I learned about what esports was, and I learned about the college opportunities. And I said, that's what I need to start for my company is something that helps these kids. 
Number one, educate them that it's available. And number two, give them the skills to get there. Yeah. And can esports be used as a proper form of exercise? Because I think these days there are certain consoles where you kind of become the character wearing all this stuff. So I don't know if it's as efficient as normal exercise, but can it still be used and you can actually become healthier as a result of it? So the actual gameplay itself process is not a matter of doing that physical moves. Those are more, um, you wouldn't be able to hold up an entire session being that physical. Yeah. But there have been studies where the heart rate of some of these pro gamers can be the same as that of a um, an athlete mm. who's like maybe driving a car, you know, in NASCAR or whatever. But yeah. that being said, the the importance of being fit and being a pro player are hand in hand. Right. You're if you are a fit player, you're going to outplay your unfit partner or, or opponent mm. because your yeah. reaction times are going to be better. Your awareness is better. Everything about it, you're going to be sharper. So we do push exercise and nutrition as part of our program because um, we don't want to we don't we don't want these kids or adults even, you know, living unhealthy lifestyles just because yeah. they're gaming. The, the mm. importance is still to be healthy and to have all of that. Um, going for you as you're playing the game yeah and because of the virtual option is this available to people from all over the world or do they have to kind of still live close to it um i mean it would be available to everyone we yeah. are offering i mean it'd be hard for the for the people in other countries to land you know an american college scholarship unless they're going to come here <laughs> and go to school hmm. um but the, uh, the the what they're going to learn in the camp is still going to be helpful no matter what they choose to do. Yeah, they're going to be learning as we said. And I guess it would be quite hard if somebody's at the other side of the world that have to be nocturnal to keep up with the timing. True, that can definitely be a thing. Um, yeah. As far as I've, we've been actually, um, we're working with people in all different countries: the UK, yeah. India. Um, so yeah, we definitely feel the. The time, the, the time gap there. Yeah, and who knows? Somebody at the other side of the world could be in an American university at the moment, anyway, because they're all online. So yes, yes, this is true. This is true. Yeah, we're not gonna we're not gonna turn anyone down from that may want to come to the camp virtually. Yeah, absolutely. Well, where are we able to find Virtual Reload and sign up to it and everything? So our site is virtualreload.com. We don't actually have the event link there. The link for the camp is wiredmindstutoring.com slash camp for camps. But if you were to go to Wired Minds and look for camps, you would find it. And then we're also on Facebook with The Virtual Reload, on Twitch yeah. with The Virtual Reload, and then Instagram and Twitter are just... Great. Well, thank you very much for coming on the show today. It's been very interesting to talk to you. Thank you, Toby. It was awesome. I love talking about this.